Hello there. Welcome to End-to-End -End Solution Architect session today. As part of our Data Lake series, today I will be talking about how can we create Amazon Redshift cluster and a table. Because if you are following this Data Lake series, you may be knowing that we are exploring multiple approaches for creating an AWS Data Lake. So in this part of this tutorial, I will be showing you only this redshift part where we will be creating a redshift cluster and simply a table in our next session i will show you that how can we load data from various sources into this redshift table we created so let's jump into the practical part i'm logged into my aws portal just search redshift click over redshift Okay. The first thing is that we have to create a cluster. Click on create cluster. It is asking for a cluster identifier. So I am just giving this cluster identifier as a name. Well, now it is asking for what are you planning to use this cluster for? Since I am using it for a demo purpose only and I need a free trial. So I clicked over here. Now you see that it says that you can avail this free trial only if you have not ever used Redshift for this account before. So this is my first time I'm creating this Redshift cluster in this account. So I have clicked on free trial and it has already selected DC2 large one node compute capacity is this and you can see that the cost estimation mentioned over here. Now let's scroll down sample data it will create a sample data once uh, the cluster is created so we are not thinking about it and now the thing is we have to add the as been username so i'm just adding it over here and adding password too so updated the password clicking on create cluster and you see this the status is creating it will take few minutes to create it let me refresh so now our cluster is ready. As you see that E2E SARS cluster 01 status is available. Click over that. These are the cluster details. Now, now our next part is create a database and a table. So click over query editor v2. It will open a new window and we will be creating a custom database as well as table so click over create click on database select the cluster here we have this cluster database give the database name suppose i am adding it as etsarsdb users and group optionals it says i am adding this same user which i created for the cluster and click on create database so you see that under this cluster i have my new database as well so there are other two databases; those are automatically created when you create a new cluster well so if i expand the new database it has a public and inside that we have tables views functions stored procedures okay now here I'll be creating a table. So again, click on create, create table, creating the cluster, selecting the cluster, selecting the database, newly created database, schema, okay, public. Suppose the table name is RS user. Well, so this is the table and we have defined. Now we have to define the column as well. Okay. We can load from CSV or add fields. So here we can add the field name. Suppose the first field name is ID. It is integer. Click on add field. Let me show you our data structure basically. So this is the user data 
we are planning to store in our Redshift data warehouse. Okay, so it has ID, name, screen name, location, URL, and description over here. So I'll be creating these fields one after another. Well, for these fields, you can set this default value or not null or automatically increment like this. I am not adding anything over here, simply clicking on create table. Well, so we see that our table has been created. It doesn't have any data, only these fields over here. So in next session, I'll be showing you how can we load data from S3 bucket by our ETL service, AWS Glue, or by creating data pipeline, how we can load the data from S3 to Redshift. Thank you for your time. If you have any query, please feel free to write in the comment box below or email us at contact us at e2esolutionarchitect.com. See you in our next session.